Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. This is Jay Nicholas. I'm going to try something different here with a general discussion about some of the things I think about when I'm tying bonefish flies. Here we go. So here's a little bonefish fly that I tied for the blog, and I'm now going to go through and discuss some of the parts of this fly. For example, the hooks and eyes, uh, dumbbells, barbells, uh, the finishes on the hooks, their eyes, and of course the materials for wing and body. So when we're talking about hooks, we'll always use a saltwater uh, finish hook. It may be stainless, it may be tin plated. Uh, some of the, like the Gamagatsu bonefish hook is actually a black finish, but it is designed for saltwater use. Uh, one of the things we do, uh, and, and, and these hooks will always have either a ring eye or a down eye, never have an up eye on these flies. Uh, and our hooks will be sizes 2 to 8 typically, but I would say a size 4 and size 6 are far more common. And by the way, this is a TMC 800S. They make an 811S, they make a bonefish fly. Um, I use gammies, I use mustads, I use TMCs, they're all good. Just make sure it's ring or straight eye and a good saltwater finish. Now let's uh, start to talk about the eyes we might use on this fly. Now, of course, the first consideration is that we, we want to adjust our weight based on how deep we're fishing these flies. So, you don't want heavy lead or even brass uh, if you're fishing a shallow flats area. And right now I'm going to talk about, uh, even with bead chain, I'm showing you here uh, a, a medium and a large bead chain um, for size comparison. And I actually, uh, this is a size 6 hook. I like the large eyes much better on a size 6 hook because it allows that fly to kind of land um, with the eyes down much more easily. The, the fly will swim the way you want it to better with the large eyes. Now if I'm going to use a size 8 hook, uh, the, the medium dumbbells would be just fine. But for this size hook, um, I'm going to stick with the large eyes. So now I'd like to talk about where you put the eyes. It's a problem if you get too close to the eye of the hook. Um, this looks like it might be okay, but you actually don't have enough room to tie your wing on. So I'm going to unwind this and I'm going I'm to move those eyes back and show you about where I think the eyes should be. And when you're first putting them on, it might seem like they're a little bit too far back. But when you rotate your hook, you can tell just how much space you actually will have to tie on that wing when you get to that point. So now let's talk about using crystal flash for a tail. Many of these bonefish flies do not use a tail. Some do. So if you're going to use a material like this, you've got to decide, do you make it a long tail? or a medium tail, or a short one. So here I'm showing you, this would be what I'd consider a long tail, and this would be what i consider a short tail. And then here we go. We're going for that medium length that I tend to prefer. And what I'm doing here is I'm showing up, trim the material, and I'm going to lash it down really well and trim it off. So when it comes to a body material, there are many choices. You could, this is a flat braid. Um, you can, all kinds of colors of flat braid. You can use tinsel, you can use chenille. You could use dubbing with a, uh, with, with a rib over it. For this fly, I'm gonna use a chartreuse uh, flat braid. It's a real nice material to use. <clears throat> and um, so, I, and I also kind of wind it up just a little bit up under the, uh, to the bend of the fly, the curve of the fly. And now pay attention to how I'm going to finish this off here. I'm, you know, you don't have to do this, but sometimes I like to uh, cover that gap 
uh, the th where the thread is uh, securing the eyes. And I'll show you here that th otherwise you just have a, a bare thread there, which is just fine. But I like to figure eight it uh, so, so that that, uh, that gap is covered. So let's go through some of the winging material. This is kip tail. This is craft fur, very common winging, mate winging material. And this is showing how you could make the wing long or short. Uh, I think the shorter wings are preferable. You have less, uh, less tendency for them to foul. And when you're tying on the wing, it's very important. Take a look and make sure that that wing is really centered right along the hook, uh, the hook point and between the eyes. So another common material is a fox, uh, arctic fox or marble fox. You can also use zonker strips. This is a nice little micro zonker strip. Uh, you can also use marabou. This is a barred marabou or grizzly hackle points. And these are narrow. These are wide hackle points. Uh, so you, you have a lot of options. I'm going to lash on a couple of those wider grizzly hackle tips here. Um, trying to make sure that they that they balance properly and they're the same length and they just kind of cup the wing on both sides. And of course we're getting near the end of this fly and we have a choice about putting on some flash. Crystal flash is really handy. It ties in really well. And I like to put my crystal flash just barely beyond the length of the wing, lash it down, and now rubber legs. We have skinny rubber legs and we have robust rubber legs. For this fly, I'm going to use the slim rubber legs. It's a grizzly barred root beer. And I'm going to bend that so I have one piece, lay it on top and tie that in together. You can tie these in separately as well, and you can have them more on the side than on the top. And this is just showing how I can color my thread at the last minute with a Copic marker. Uh, you don't have to. You can use many different colors, thread for the head, and then you can finish off with a standard head cement or a Loctite, uh, which is real tough. Or uh, my favorite these days is Solar Res Bone Dry. It's a hard uh, UV cure. It goes on very nicely with the applicator. Uh, and uh, when you set it up with a light, it is rock solid. So thank you. I hope this has helped. We will have links to these products below. Uh, we're happy to answer questions. Uh, give the shop a call. We'll have our phone number listed as well as our email. And um, we're looking forward to doing some more of these uh, review series and tying different types of flies. So from all of us at the Caddis Fly Shop in Eugene, Oregon, we thank you. So we look forward to helping serve your fly tying and fly fishing needs. Hey, tie up some of these flies. Uh, they work for carp too. So until next time, this is Jay Nicholas for the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Thank you.